Previously on Praxis Prepper. Hey YouTube, this is Praxis Prepper, and today I want to address why I have this growing pile of sticks in my yard. I'm going to be composting human shit. But before I turn you off, uh, I wanted to talk with an expert on the topic. Um, uh, just to alleviate any concerns you might have. And the expert is myself, from the future. I uh, just downloaded a new app where I can receive uh, video uh, emails from the future. I just received uh, this this morning. I have I've not watched it myself, so we'll watch it together. Okay, listen, one thing you need to know, do not do it, don't do it. It is the worst decision you've ever made in your entire life. I got sick for a month, and this worm the size of a weasel climbed out of my ass, and then it grew, and now it's the size of a bear. It's the size of a bear, and it's chasing me. Okay, um, not what I was expecting, uh, but, you know, I'm sure it's going to be fine. Um, I'm going to try it out anyway. Let's check it out. Hey YouTube, this is Practice Prepper. What I'm standing next to right now is my humanure compost pile. I started this one year ago and today's the day I'm going to kind of go inside and just see what's been going on over the winter. Uh, as you can see there's a tarp over it. If you're ever going to do humanure composting uh, it's something you have to be a little extra careful about. If anybody's uh, excrement has pathogens in it, you know, pinworms or anything like that, uh, that stuff passes right through their fecal material and if you try to compost it and it doesn't get composted completely uh, those eggs and organisms can survive it. So uh, I've got the tarp over here so that if it rains really hard uh, the, uh, uh, that sort of stuff doesn't get washed out of the, this pile and go downhill somewhere for someone to walk through with their bare, bare feet or something like that. Um, that said, I have a little bit of a concern whether maybe I cut off the moisture too much to the pile. Maybe the, the pile would have liked to have had a little more moisture. But we're going to find that out when we go inside because basically half of it got some rain falling on it and the other half was pretty much covered. So we're going to see what the, uh, what the result of that is. So it's a moment of truth. We'll pop off this little lid and see what we got going on inside. I think a pitchfork would be ideal for this, but I don't own a pitchfork, so I'll be using a, a straight edge rake here. So I'm just going to start biting down into the pile here a little bit, get the dry stuff off the top out of here, and wow, okay. Okay, right away I'm seeing a lot of stuff that looks like all the leaves and sticks and wood chips and everything I threw in here that's really rich in carbon. Uh, what I'm seeing is uh, evidence that that stuff has really been breaking down and turning into what looks to me like kind of a proto-dirt, like it's almost to a dirt stage. Uh, and we're just a couple inches down below the surface at this point. Uh, I see a lot of bugs uh, moving about in there. I'm also seeing a lot of fungus action, little microfilaments from the funguses eating away at the, the bark of the different uh, sticks and twigs. I see something that actually kind of looks like a pinworm, <laughs> um, but you know, so many of those things look exactly the same. I'm a little bit freaked out right now because uh, I'm, I'm seeing that. It's, it's, it's hard to pick up on the camera, but it's just this little white tendril and it's kind of poking around anywhere, uh, but it's just a reminder to me to be cautious around this because of the reasons that I, I mentioned earlier. As long as you don't touch it, as long as you don't get it on, ha on your hands, and as long as afterwards you do a real thorough cleaning, keeping it all in one place, composting it, uh, I mean, this is nature's way of getting rid of poop all over the planet. I mean, you know, animals poop all over the place, and, you know, our world isn't a toxic wasteland because of it. Nature has a way of dealing with this type of thing, and it's happening, happening right here. But I'm kind of close to it, so I'm a little freaked out. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. Let's we'll see what's, what's going on a little bit deeper. So far, the moisture content looks pretty good on the wet side, which is to be expected because this was getting rain and, and whatnot. In fact, before I go any deeper, let's just check out the dry side and see what that's like over here. Just get oh, wow. I, yeah, I don't think the dry side really composted much at all. It's, um, it's all locked together. Those, those sticks did not decompose at all. And uh, this dry side, I think, uh, probably didn't do much over the whole winter. The wet side, however, it's looking pretty good. I'm going to go a little bit deeper and just see what I see down here. A lot of dirt-like material. It looks like good soil. Now, I'm not going to go sticking my hands in there for a bunch of reasons, especially the fact that I just saw a bunch of possibly pathogenic creatures moving around in there. But um, that kind of stuff is going to break down with the heat of the composting pro process uh, and, uh, in theory, should render this soil safe. 
Now, uh, what I plan on doing with this is not going to be putting it on, you know, my potato crops or anything. I'll put it around, like, ornamental trees and things like that, things that have maybe fruit that's way up above the, the, the ground, maybe an apple tree or a peach tree or something like that, uh, where I don't have to worry about any splatter getting up onto the fruit itself. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's looking like it's working pretty well. I think it needs another year. I, I've read a lot uh, that suggests this is, a good, this is good to do as a two-year process. I feel like this first year was kind of successful on one side. The other side needs a little bit of work. So I guess I'm going to pump some more poop onto this. We'll uh, pop a lid on it. And maybe over the next year, instead of me keeping this tarp on 24-7, maybe I'll just keep the tarp on uh, in general. But if there's going to be a light rain, maybe I'll take it off, let some moisture get in there, and then relit it uh, just to protect uh, ourselves from the idea that there could be a, you know, a deluge in, in any of this material getting washed out. So that's it. If you're thinking about doing this, I'd highly recommend the Humanure Handbook. It's a book that I've read. Uh, it's pretty popular. You can get downloads online, I think, for free in various places. If I can find a link of that, I will put it in the description below so you can check that out. This is definitely a process that closes the loop on the nutrient stream. Uh, if you're throwing away all of the organic material that's coming out of your butt and you're trying to be self-sufficient, uh, you know, that's a, it's an enormous uh, supply of well, organic material that you're just uh, tossing out the window. So if, uh, if it's possible for people to figure this out, crack this nut, and uh, use it to, uh, to their advantage, I think that would be a great thing for a lot of people. So that's it. But be careful. Read the Humor Manure Handbook so you know what you're doing. And um, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video.